G'day, I'm Luke from Drifter. Today I'm going to do an instruction video for the dot trailer. So if you've bought a dot trailer, mainly for our customers, um, this will show you how to use your trailer, how to set it up, and also how to hook it up with your vehicle. So a few tips and um, show you how to do it. Okay, now the first thing is the hitch. Alright, um, it's important to get the trailer just about you know, level. Um, you don't want it sitting up at all. Slightly down is okay. So you might need to get a hitch like this which is adjustable or buy a hitch that's going to get the right amount of height for you. Okay, now most people have got a, a ball hitch like that and we need to take that off and put the odd hitch on here. Okay, so all you need is a, is a Heyman Reese tongue like that and this one will fit straight on. Now a quick tip to undo this is to just take it out, put it on the side and you need a big shifter. There is a split pin in there, so it won't be easy to undo until you get that split released. Right, eh? A lot easier like that than trying to do it from underneath. Okay, now the Oz hitch will just sit straight over the top of that. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so we've done that up, and again. So you can get that nice and tight. Okay. Back up like that. Put your pin through. Down there like that. Now, I like to put a zip tie around this section there. Okay, um, I have had this, um, the pin spin around on me and uh, pop that pin out on two occasions. So uh, it's just a bit of a funny, the hitch these with the Land Cruisers, um, yeah, you can actually pop that out. So by zip tying that on there, it's definitely no, never going to come out. Okay, so next thing, just hook it up, line that top section up as best you can and just drop it on. So that's how simple the odds hitch is to work. You just put this pin in here. Now it's best to have a little bit of weight still on the jockey wheel. You can see that there, it's nice and easy to slide through. If you've got the jockey wheel up, it is a little bit harder to put on. Drop that through, put the pin in. It's ready to go. Now one thing I did mention is on the side of the odds hitch, you do have some tightening lugs there and you should do those up as well, just to get that nice and steady. Okay, you've got two chains, okay, um, so you can do those up, of course, and you've got your 7-pin flat, comes with that standard, and also the Anderson plug. Now, the Anderson plug, okay, is to charge the battery, of course. Same thing to unhook. Take your pin out, you can just sit it there. And that's unhooked, ready to go. Now once you're unhooked and ready to set up, the first thing you need to do is try and get the trailer level as best you can. So bring that down to about there. Once you've got that, you need to drop one of the stabilizers down. Stability. Okay. Now I like to have it on a slight angle like that. And you can drop those down with a little tool. It is a lot more stable if you've got both stabilizers down. Just depends, uh, you know, how much setting up you want to do. But if you've unhooked the trailer, you definitely need to at least have one of these down. Okay, now once that's down, you can actually even use these to slightly adjust the trailer this way um, by jacking one side up a little bit or the other. So you can use them a little bit like that to help get the right level. Okay, so we've come inside the sheds, blowing a gale outside, so a little bit quieter inside here and we'll set it up here for you. So, we've got the rear stabiliser down. Now also, it's important to put the handbrake on. Okay, that'll uh, sort of lock the trailer from moving a little bit and um, helps to stabilise it as well. 
Next thing to do, okay, is release your straps and we're going to take the cover off. Now you can leave the straps just sitting here if you like, or I like to unclip them and sit them down in here somewhere. Now the, the uh, zip for the cover is always on the driver's side, about three quarters of the way back. And the reason I've got it there is that if you wanted to grab something out of here quickly, you don't have to take the whole cover off, you can zip this around three sides, peel the cover back and you can get to some items in there if you like. With the cover as well, you need to turn this top flap up like that. All right. Okay, when you come around this side here, just lift this section here up, make it a little bit easier around this side. Now this cover's going to come right off. All right. If you've got somebody on the other side, you can get them to help you roll this off. Alright, let's just roll it off. And while you're up here, extend the ladder out um, at least about halfway. You put some of those from the other. Now the cover, fold it in half and set him underneath. Over this side as well, there's four straps here. We'll need to release those. Now these are the, the side awnings. Okay, we can store them up there. And I'd like to just take them off and sit them there like that. This has got some, got some sides, some uh, three long stabilizers. We've got two of the shorter stabilizers. as well. Show that a set. Get those out. This is our boot shelf. Go there. And another frame here. So all those sort of things that's on top, you can just lift those down and sit them against there like that. Now we've undone the other side. Now the other important thing is when this flips over, this section here, this section here is going to come and hook into here. And it's very important that that is not sitting like that where I could get jammed. So probably the main thing to remember is to just drop this down on both sides so that it's got a free area to come down and lock into there. Now there's two ways you can do this from here. You can lift the actuators up now or you can do it later on. <coughs> the actuators um, at the moment they're going to lift evenly because the weight's distributed evenly. Um, once you fold it out then there's more weight over this side and these actuators are going to go slightly slower. And that's why you've seen me hold the ladder, take a little bit of weight on the ladder while someone presses the button. So if you're doing it on your own, you're probably better off just to lift it up first and then fold it over second. And I'll do that now. Okay, so we'll make sure that you can see there's a key there, an isolator switch, so we'll turn that on. You can see by the light working. And we're just going to lift the actuator. Now the thing is, just the press of a button, we don't need to go too high. You only want to go above head high. So while you're standing here, you can sort of see that that's plenty of height to get above the top of my belt. Alright, of course anything that's, you know, if it's the higher it goes, it will be a little bit less stable. So there's no point lifting it too high. So it's really dependent on the height, how tall you are. All you want to be able to achieve is that you can walk under this without hitting your head on it. And for me, that's about right there. And that's lifted up 200 mils. I've still got about another 100 mils to lift up if I need to. Now this is a big tent, it's two meters long. Okay, it's the biggest roof tent on the market. It is a little bit um, difficult to lift it up and over. Just that first couple of feet. Okay, so if you've got somebody else who's going to stand on the other side there and just help you lift that first little bit is quite handy. 
Okay, but you don't have to. Okay, so I'm just going to stand up on here. And you want to get it to the balance point, okay, which is about there. So there's no weight here anymore. Now I'm just going to gently drop it down. Like that. Okay, now we're going to adjust this ladder straight away. The ladder is quite important to get at about that angle there. Okay, if it's too far out, then it's not going to support any weight. The ladder's not going to want to slip out. And if it's too steep, it just makes it difficult to get in and out of the bed. So, you want a nice angle about that. This one here can drop down. It's got to just, okay, the tent will settle after a little while, alright, and it'll sit a little bit flatter. Okay. Okay, now if you're on your own, it does help a little bit to extend these out first, before you get the bow in place. And if you take that about halfway. You can see this little section in here, okay, little knuckle, we just want to push that into there like that. Same on this side here. Now you can do the other side. So bring that about halfway. Second one like that. And we'll just tension this one here as well. Okay. Small piece here we can pull out. It's got a thumb pin in it. We we'll use that a little bit of help getting up and down the ladder. Okay. Now the bow here. Okay. Set this bow up. This section here, you want that about, or as close as you can to the centre, alright, and there's a little section up here where that clips into, right there, okay, and you can see that there, it just slips into a little section there, okay, and this one here, ties onto that. There are some, there's three ties here, you can put those on if you like. Okay, and up in here, that just sits back about where you can see it, about on that line there. Once you've got that up, the boot shelf can come out. Alright, sits on there like that. Now this light is, should be working, um, it's hooked up permanently so you can turn that on if you need to as well. Okay. Alright, now for this end here that's pretty much it. So we've put this bow here in, okay, the three stage poles we've put out, we've put the orange bow in, the boot shelf and the small handheld. So that's all we need to do on this side. Okay, now we'll, just, we'll just zoom into this little truck you can see there. When that comes down, it's important that that sits in there neatly. Okay? So if it doesn't, the tent's not going to want to sit down properly. All right. It's a long tent. You do sometimes get a little bit of bowing here, and that may not sit in there properly. So if you find it's not sitting down level on this side. Now with these tensioners, okay, um, they are high tensile, but they are very springy. Okay? Now, the best thing to do is to put the that, in, that section in there first, and then you come down to this hole here. Now this hole here is on a bit of an angle, heading up into that direction there, okay? So 
You won't get it in if you just try to put it in like that. Alright, so put that on there first. Alright, and you want to be point, pushing it up into that direction. And they're quite springy, so just pull them down a bit and they'll slide in there nicely. Just takes a little bit of practice to get them right. Okay, so again, that one in there. Sit him in there. And bend him down. Now, best to put those ones there, right? And we've got three on this side here. Give him a hole and then give him a little bend. Okay. Now, this is a brand new tent. Uh, customer's going to pick this up next week, but normally these windows will be closed. Okay. I'll show you the best way to have them. windows down, right, so if you want to have it open like that, just that flap, tuck it inside, which keeps it nice and neat. So that's really where you want them when you fold it up. It's good to have them open a little bit, um, which does help when you're folding it away as well. Okay, now there is two more bows in the package, which is for this window here, but because of the awning, it's quite difficult to put those in. So. Generally, we never worry about it. Um, this one here can go in, no worries. But the one on this side is quite difficult. I have actually um, bent this around a little bit into like a little Z and put it in, but you'll find that you just don't really need it. You've got four big windows, a big one on that side, and generally you won't need to worry about this window here. Okay, now we'll set up the awning. So, remember the awning can be set up independent to the trailer if you need to, or you can, you can not set it up at all if it's a nice night and you don't need it. Um, but this is how it works. So, open it up. Now, there's a little Velcro section like this. Okay, that's important. Sit that there. And here on top will be four piles. Now, these two little spreader bars, we don't really need those yet. I'll show you what they're for in a second. This is definitely a bit easier to but I'll show you how to do it on your own because it is possible. It's one of the things where just the more times you do it, the easier it becomes. All right. Now these two poles are connected and they just drop down. Put them about three quarter height. All right. Inside here is a bit of Velcro. Just right here. Right, and that releases these piles here. Right, come around this side. So I've got those two poles there. You can just push them out of the way, they'll hang there fine. And then back up in here. We've got two more poles that come out here like this. So they're the first ones you want to get in. Now these are twist lock poles like I said, and just a matter of getting used to which way they tighten up. Okay, so you can see here it's anti-clockwise tightens like that. Okay. So once you've got these two here out, you know it's a lot easier then. Alright. Okay now, these have got a bench bigger on top. That goes in there like that. And then, now turn it towards the eyelet. 
goes on like that, okay? Sitting up there. That bent spigot is so that once it's tight, okay, the wind can't blow that off the top there. Now around this side here, just coming over to this. This one needs to extend out. All right, there's a thumb pin there, and that will lock in place like that. So get that locked in first, and then it's exactly the same on this one here. So put the pile through, bend it towards the eyelet, sit him on there like that. Okay, get the height. Now that's what this strap here is for now, is what I like to do is just put it on there first, like that. Okay, bend him towards the pole. Bring that around now. See how that hooks up there? Okay, that just holds those together and it means that that now is, is uh, nice and tight and freestanding. Okay, 